welcome to the July edition of the Daisy Chain and it looks a little bit different today but so we can share with you all of our stories from the month we are going to take our masks off today so that we can share with you exactly what's been going on around Turak. And today we have a really exciting program that we'd like to share some more information with you about. And so joining me today, I have Miss Olivia Bugden, our Deputy Head of Senior School Personal Growth. Olivia, has personal growth ever been so important in a community as it is now? I think it was possibly one of the best times to do flourishing, to look at and educate ourselves and think about how we can make small changes in our day to be feeling more positive, feeling more safe, feeling more happy about what's happening. That's exactly right. And I mean, I think the growth of our students is always one of our biggest priorities, but to be able to kind of track it and to give them a voice. Um, I'm wondering if you can share a little bit more about how flourishing works and, and gives students that agency. <laughs> so what I love about flourishing is that it allows students to understand their education around wellbeing. I think we're really good at talking about the simple things like gratitude, kindness, um, reflection, balance. But sometimes when we can't get things right, we maybe need to know that it's a little bit bigger than that. And it could be something to do with our meaning and purpose, how we're feeling about our achievements in the classroom or on the sports field. So flourishing gives them the language around all the areas and all the pillars of well-being to investigate that. Um, so it's kind of exciting to me because it looks beyond the everyday things that the school already does really well and asks them to experiment with areas that maybe they're not as familiar with, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sadie, I'm putting you on the spot today because you've only just got your flourishing results back. Can you tell me, what did you learn about yourself through that profile? Well, I learned a lot of things. I think it, the flourishing survey really helped me identify what my real strengths are and what I also need to work on. Mm. And, and, and are you going to share those with us today? What is it that you are harsh on yourself on? Um, my positive emotions, and I think that definitely comes hand in hand with choosing subjects and just working out what I'm going to do beyond high school. And my strengths were definitely sleep, which I'm quite <laughs> proud of. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that's always a protective factor for you, that you look after yourself with things like sleep? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Talk to me about those positive emotions, Sadie. Now that you have seen those results, what have you committed to do to try to improve them? I think just really take some time to think about, you know, what I see myself doing in VCE and, you know, just kind of re remind myself that whatever I do is going to be the right decision for me. So, Sadie, I have no <laughs> doubt of that. What did you find was a strength for you when you were looking at um, your flourishing survey? Strangely enough, I found one of my strengths was purpose and achievement. I think knuckling down and choosing my VC subjects has really helped me to achieve that. I sort of have a sense of direction and what I want to do and I am committed to staying with that. Is there anything when you looked at it where you were surprised or you thought, oh, that was a bit different to what my experience was? Um, not really. I think it reflected sort of what I've been doing recently quite well. And is there something that where you could say, oh, I'm going to try and do that every day so that I can strengthen something or that I can work on something? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Getting more sleep. <laughs> yeah. So we've got somebody who's sleeping the way they think they've got enough hours in the day and you think you could maybe squeeze a couple more hours in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's interesting. Do you think that that will be an easy task? I think just, I guess, the general stress of the pandemic at the moment is sort of weighing a lot on us and I just sort of need to knuckle down and just get to bed earlier or do some sort of relaxing exercises yeah. or listen to music or something. Yeah and I think that's the key with this is to experiment with what works for you. Yeah. We do the flourishing survey every six months. How have your results changed from last time to this time? Well, funnily enough, I found that last time I wasn't sleeping very well at all, so it's, and, so it's kind of flipped for me in that way, and although like, my positive emotions are down a little bit, but I think, you know, I'm hopeful that they will come back up. Yeah. I have no doubt. Um, Olivia, one of the strengths of this survey is we actually can look at mass changes, not just in a cohort, but over a period of time. Um, was there anything that stood out to you? What is different about Turak students in these last six months apart from these? <laughs> so um, from November last year to now, sleep is up for 0.4%, um, which I think you would expect on the most part because we're not rushing around and doing 100 mm. things and going to our sport. 
Um, so that was really nice to see. It was really up in year seven, um, which I thought was really lovely because they're obviously knuckling down and just sort of being cozy and sleeping. Um, positive emotions were also a little bit down, mm. as were positive relations. Mm. And I think that again, when you look at our circumstances, we're having to put more effort in to reach out to people. People might not be getting back as quickly because they're going through their own things. So it can feel a little disconnected. So yeah, it was, it was interesting to see that they were the, the areas as a school that we'd kind of strengthened and to expect in this time that we might need to sort of proactively focus on. And, and what a lovely message, I think, for everybody that at, at a time where we can connect in so many different ways, it is requiring that little bit more effort. And so I think a beautiful part, not just of these flourishing surveys, but for the whole community right now, is to persist with that effort, to reach out, to connect. Um, and I think one of our strengths as a school is that we know we are enabling that conversation, not just for our students here now, but also in our young alumni, alumni, staff, and wider community connections. So a great timely reminder for us all to continue to persist um, with that effort for those positive relationships for us all. One of our newest habits around here are these gorgeous face masks and I have to thank um, the whole school community for their dedication and commitment um, to continuing to do all we can to reduce the transmission of COVID here at Turak and as expected Turak students have shown great creativity and flair in their design of their masks and I'm sure by next edition when we come to you these will be looking a lot fancier as well. We look forward to our next edition of The Daisy Chain. Thank you so much.